So, these are the retroflex tops produced uh, by a Sindhi speaker and first I will produce the set of sounds, first is an implosive and then other uh, non-retroflex sounds and then the other five sounds are the retroflex sounds. So, please listen uh, carefully. Bam. Bam. The second set of sounds were the retroflex sounds and uh, the initial word d, the initial sound d, <coughs> yes and same here, Tan. T, Thug. T, Thug. D. Okay, so um, those are retroflex sounds produced by curling the tip of the tongue in such a way that the back of the tip touches the alveolar region, the post-alveolar region. So, um, let us now review the places of articulation that we have looked at uh, till now. So, and look at the corresponding symbols again. So, now we can see that the bilabial plosives that we have talked about for English and which are very common in languages. So, these are the bilabial plosives, then there is a bilabial nasal and then the labiodental nasal followed by the fricatives and then uh, bilabial fricatives and labiodental fricatives. The uncommon sound here is the lingual labials that we saw before and there are two diacritics that this diacritic is used to express uh, it's a symbol for lingual labials. So, these are the labials. So, there are some trills, bilabial trills are there, they are proximants and in total we have stops, we have nasals, we have trills, we have fricatives and we also have approximants which could be produced by in the labial region. Now, after labial, the place of articulation that we talked about is that of coronals. So, coronals, first in the coronal series, we talked about interdental and dental sounds and these are the symbols, the fricatives that are used for th and th and these, the sister, uh, the stops have uh, used a, a symbol there beneath the t and beneath the that uh, is used to, this, so these are called diacritics which is used to show the dental place of articulation. And for alveolar, we have the uh, very uh, commonly used Roman t, d symbols and so also the alveolar nasal and the fricatives s, z. And we also just talked about retroflex and uh, retroflexes are produced with the tongue tip curl and articulation with the surface. Uh, where the, with this, where the surface is beneath the tongue is used as curled up and the target area is that of the post alveolar region. These are symbols used to show retroflexes, da, da, na, sha and zha. So, part of the tongue use depending on whether it is the apical or laminal, these two diacritics are used to show uh, apical versus laminal. So, uh, this is the symbol for apical, this is the symbol for laminal. So, so far then for labials we have looked at bilabial, labiodental, lingual labials, interdental, laminal dental, laminal alveolar and laminal post alveolar. In the uh, coronal region we have seen apical dentals, apical alveolars, apical post alveolar and the subapical region we have seen subapical palatals which are retroflexes. So, these are the two uh, places of articulation and we have seen now that there are more variations possible inside the big categories of labial and coronal we can see that there are many more 
places of articulations which are possible and which may not be shown in the IPH heart, but which may be shown with the use of diacritics. So, these are the diacritics that we just talked about that we have for voiceless sounds which can be produced as voice, they, we have diacritics for that, for voice sounds which can be devoiced also have a symbol for that, symbols for aspiration, symbol for more rounding, less rounding, symbol for um, advanced, retracted, centralized and these are all vowels, diacritics for vowels and mid centralized and also syllabic and non-syllabic etc. So, for consonants here we have breathy voice, creaky voice and lingual labials which we just showed and then labialized, palatalized, velarized, pharyngealized and these are the secondary articulations which we will see shortly. And also these are the symbols for dental, apical, laminal, nasalized and nasal release, lateral release and no audible release. So, this is the symbol for no audible release and lateral with a l and nasal release with a no. So, among all these categories, distinctions that you saw among the sounds, the ones which are most common uh, in languages are the bilabial, alveolar and velar place of articulation. In uh, Madison's patterns of sounds, we have of it surveys 317 languages, there are 314 bilabial stops, 316 alveolar dental stops and 315 uh, velar stops. So, let us uh, play these short videos of places of articulation, so that we again see uh, the basic differences between the place of articulation. So, this is a bilabial sound, the lips coming together, this is the labiodental with the lower lip touching the upper teeth, dental sound where the tip of the tongue or the tongue blade touching the the, the teeth, the dental region, the alveolar where we have the tongue tip, tongue tip or tongue blade touching the alveolar region. So, this is the, the target is the alveolar region and here the target is the post alveolar region and the retroflex where we see the curling very clearly here. So, these are your alveolar post alveolar retroflex and then uh, we are talking about the dorsal region, we have the palatal sound where the back of the tongue makes a uh, goes towards the roof of the palatal region. So, you can see the back of the tongue going up towards the palatal region and then here the gesture is the back of the tongue targeting the velar region and here we have the uvular um, region targeted by the back wall of the tongue. And then these are the radicals which we have not seen as yet or discussed as yet, the pharyngeals and then we can have a glottal sound where the glottis is the place where we have a constriction. And of course, in all these things voicing is always there as we discussed previously, sounds may be voiced or voiceless where the vocal cords are in neutral state versus this the vocal cords are vibrating. So, these are the uh, dorsal sounds that we have not talked about, the dorsals and the radicals which we will talk about uh, now. And so, th the palatal sounds which we just saw, the root of the tongue makes uh, uh, targets the wall of the, uh, the palatal region and these are the sounds that we can produce stops, nasals and uh, fricatives and approximants can be produced in the palatal region. So, palatal stops are common are uh, possible in languages world of the 317 languages, 59 languages have palatal stops. So, uh, we will play these sounds from Ngo uh, spoken in Cameroon and ngo we have a uh, distinction between laminal dentialveolar, laminal palatoalveolar, 
palatal and velar. So these are the four places of articulation which we will play now. Okay, so distinctions between those four palatal, four regions uh, which are the laminal, the antialveolar, the coronal sounds, the laminal, palatal alveolar, palatal and velar. So, it is possible to make uh, these distinction to have all the places of articulation or the four places alveolar, palatal alveolar, palatal and velar in a language. So, um, Ingo uh, which we just heard, uh, these are the articulatory positions of laminal dentialveolar. So, for the dential alveolar sound, laminal, uh, the blade of the tongue makes an occlusion there in the alveolar region between the dental and the alveolar region. And then the uh, we have the palatal alveolar and then we have the palatal sound. And these are the three stops, palatal stops in Ngo. So, here the dotted lines on the palatal sagittal section correspond to the contour lines uh, that were superimposed in the palatogram. So, languages can also have palatal nasals. So, these are the palatal nasals that occur in Hungarian. So, the stop, uh, the voiceless stop, the voice stop and the nasal. These three occur, um, occur between vowels and uh, the nasal has a glide before the production of the vowel. So, a lot of languages have um, uvulars and we will uh, play uh, the uvular nasals in Japanese uh, before we uh, ramp up today's session. So, these are uvular nasals from Japanese. So, in this session, we have seen that uh, languages can have uh, very many places of articulation which we did not see when we looked at only at English. So, we did not understand, we did not look at the distinction between apical and laminal in the discussion of coronals. In dentals, we saw here in this lecture, we saw that there are many places of articulation which could be uh, employed when we look at dentals, when we look at labials or when we look at coronals and there are other places of articulation like palatal, like uvular and velar where the back of the tongue is used and as against the um, sounds, the coronal sounds where the tip or the blade of the tongue is used for making any occlusion in the production of um, stops and fricatives or in the um, production of approximants and nasals etc. So, in the next uh, class again we will see more of place of articulation and manner of articulation and also uh, see how phonation etc. lend more characteristics to sounds in the different languages of the world. Thank you for watching. Thank you.